What's going on guys? Harrison and David here from Gundog Armory. Yesterday we went ahead and went over suppressors. Today we're going to touch a little bit more on that due to the amount of questions we received yesterday. Um, so let's start this off with who can buy a suppressor, David? So there's a common misconception that you need a class three license to own a suppressor. Class three license is actually what we have to be able to sell you a suppressor. Anyone can own a suppressor as long as you're able to pass a basic background check. Basically, if you can buy a gun, you can own a suppressor. It's a little more paperwork and you have to pay a fee to the ATF and you have to buy the cost of the suppressor. But other than that, nothing barring anyone in the state of Florida from owning one. Now, when I buy a suppressor, I can either file as an individual or through a trust. Can you explain the differences between an individual and a trust? With an individual, you are filing just as yourself. Uh, with a trust, you are a company, quote unquote. Uh, with a trust, it protects you uh, legally against ATF searches and seizures. Uh, it also protects you in case of uh, any accidents with the suppressor. So you're able to dissolve the trust should anything happen. And that business goes with it. You will lose the suppressor, but it's better than losing your freedom. So on a trust, as an individual, I'm basically telling the government, this is my item. So I have to be everywhere where this item is. Say I had a family member or a friend that I couldn't necessarily go to the range with that person, but they're on the trust. So what's the difference between a trustee and a beneficiary on the trust? So uh, the difference between a beneficiary and a trustee on a trust is a trustee will have to go through the same process as you. So they'll have to get fingerprinted and have to get passport photos every single time you want to buy a new suppressor or transfer a suppressor out of your name. They have to agree on it. A beneficiary does not have to do any of that. However, they can still take the suppressor to the range and use it without you having to be there accompanying and babysitting the suppressor. So if I have like a son or a daughter or somebody younger that I want to add on there in case something happened to me, I would put them as a beneficiary. If I had a friend that I wanted to let use the suppressor that I couldn't necessarily go with, he would be a trustee. I would never put anyone who is in family as a trustee, mainly because, well, a trustee can buy and sell suppressors under your trust, just like you can. They are a partial owner. A beneficiary only gets the suppressor after something happens to you, should you pass on. Now, when I buy a suppressor, am I put on a registry or does the item, how does that work with a registry? So, uh, if uh, the suppressor is registered with the ATF and the uh, National Firearms Act, the NFA. Um, if you are a trustee and you have a trust, then your trust is registered along with the serial number. Uh, if you file as an individual, it is your name uh, backing that serial number. Now, let's say I want multiple suppressors, right? So if I buy three suppressors, can I all put that on one form to send to the ATF or does each individual suppressor cost $200 and I have to submit a form for each? So each individual serial number, whether it be suppressors, machine guns, SBRs, or SBSs, uh, require an individual form four or form one. Uh, each individual uh, serial number will require a $200 tax stamp and you will have to fill out all the paperwork over and over again. Uh, there is no form that you could send to the ATF for multiple at once. Uh, however, if you own a trust, you can bequeath the suppressors all at one time uh, to an individual who is a beneficiary. I'm glad you brought up the form. So form one, form four, form four, three. What is the main difference between a form four and a form one when it comes to suppressors? What would I use? What form would I use if I'm building one? What form would I be doing if I bought one? So it's pretty simple. If you're buying a suppressor from a shop, one of us who has a class three, uh, it's a form four that we help you fill out. If you're building a suppressor on your own, which is completely legal in the United States, in most states, um, it is a form one. Uh, the only difference is who's building it. So basically the form one would be if I ended up getting something and I wanted to build something and let the ATF know, hey, this is what I'm building. Is it legal? Is that still $200? Is it the same price of Form 1, Form 4? It's $200 per item or does it change? It is always $200 when you're dealing with NFA item other than any other weapon. So I would buy the suppressor for $1,000 and then I would have to account that, by the way, I'm gonna to have to send the government a $200 as well on top of that. Yes, the government always wants their money. Okay, and how long, say I bought the suppressor today, how long until I actually get to use that, that unicorn item that I bought. <laughs> uh, right now, uh, NFA uh, Form 4s are running about nine months to 12 months. 
Uh, form 1s are, paper form 1s are running about the same time. If you do e-file form 1s, uh, they're a bit shorter. Mm -hmm. I think I e-filed my SBR, and again, that was an SBR, but that took right around 10 days. So form 1s were taken not too long, a couple months ago. Um, so basically, how old do I have to be to buy one of these? Uh, as long as you can buy the firearm uh, in the state of Florida, you can buy a suppressor. So we have a lot of people that come in, they're purchasing firearms, and they're really hesitant about buying suppressors because they don't know if they're going to be able to get the suppressor. What happens if I buy the suppressor and I send the $200, but I get declined? Or, or what happens if I send it in and something happens between now and my approval where I either get arrested or a court case or something? Does that $200 remain there? Do they send the $200 back to me? And obviously I'm $1,000 or whatever into the suppressor. You know, what, what kind of happens with that item? Uh, most shops uh, will charge a restocking fee for any item that is not being able to be completed. Uh, the ATF will uh, refund the $200. Um, however, it will get stuck into a ATF limbo. We are dealing with the government. Unfortunately, there's not much in, that we can do as a shop and there's not much that the customer can do as right. if they're filing. And they tell us even less. They tell us even less. They will tell the customer a little bit more information as long as you have your trust name, the serial number, and obviously who you bought from. They'll tell you where in the process it is. Mm -hmm. But they don't give you details. They don't give you estimates. It's all just, it's in process. Or it's done and it's being shipped. Or there's a problem with it. We need this information, this, this, and this. Please send that to us. All right, well, there you guys go. This is part two of our suppressors. Uh, we're going to go ahead and touch a little bit more on it tomorrow. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and DM us. We're on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, just go ahead and send us a message. Any questions you got, we'll try to go ahead and add it into our series. Um, next week, I think, just uh, kind of like a little slip in there. I think we're doing full auto next week. Uh, full autos next week. This week, we're still going to touch on what is a law on suppressors. suppressors. Yeah. So we'll touch on that. We'll see you guys tomorrow. You guys have a good day. Gundog Army, we'll see you here.